Hi guys, welcome to another tactical video. Um, Sisters of Battle again today. And I know it's been a while, but um, basically my editing program expired. Um, I tried to find another good one to do all the fancy openings and closings, but uh, I've been struggling and then I haven't really had the time. So I um, decided to just get basically, get some videos out there at last. Um, I can always add in the other stuff later. I mean, that's not what you're watching these for anyway, is it? So, yeah, so anyway, this video is going to be about Repentia. Um, Repentia are an unpopular choice. Um, they take up an elite slot, which means they're not really competing with anything but Celestians. Um, Celestians are generally considered to be useless, and honestly, I can see why. Um, but we won't go on about them too much. So what it basically means is if you want some elite choices, uh, you're really looking at Repentia. So that means if you have some spare points left over or you want something a little different, then you know these are probably your first stop. Um, so what do you get for the points? Well, a full squad of 10 costs 175 points. Um, alongside the Mistress of Repentance, um, you will get basically 17 points each for a Repentia and each one is normal sister stat line except slightly higher weapon skill uh, two attacks base and they're fearless but the main thing of course is that they all have eviscerators um, eviscerators for those who don't know are basically chain fists so even though you're only strength 3 base uh, your strength is doubled like a power fist um, strikes AP2 and it has armor bane, so you're rolling two dice for penetration against vehicles. So that's pretty nasty, because um, in addition to all that, you also have rage and fleet. So rage means that if on the turn you charge, you get an extra two attacks instead of just the one. So that means each model on the charge is going to be getting four attacks. And that's pretty high when you consider that they're all basically chain fist attacks. Um, so what, what's the best targets for these? I mean, obviously people tend to know this stuff, but I'm covering it all anyway. Um, best targets are armor because of the armor vein. So, um, if you have a full squad of these charging in, they will wreck a land raider, even through glances, even though it'd be difficult. If you have an understrength squad, you're still likely to do some damage to the land raider. You can pen it and all that sort of thing. But it's it's actually quite difficult because you're only strength six to start with. Um, lighter vehicles they will shred through, no problem. They're particularly good against walkers. Um, so yeah, obviously armor. Um, the other thing is monstrous creatures, and there is a huge increase in the number of those around at the moment. Um, obviously, these would count as more or less power fists against any kind of monstrous creature, so they do very well. Um, it's a hell of a lot of attacks. The problem is um, they're also very squishy and they're also of course unwieldy weapons so they attack at initiative one which means they have to weather a storm of fire against them first. Um, they're going to be attacked and likely die before they get to fight back but luckily their act of faith deals with that and um, if it goes off it basically means they get to stay alive until they do one single attack. They get to attack once per model if they're dead. Um, this doesn't do a whole lot in in the grand scheme of things, but it's you know it's a nice little thing to do. It means you're going to get some attacks off as so long as you're in assault. <coughs> Excuse me. So obviously the main strength of these is that you ensure you get the charge into assault. Um, this can be quite easy to do actually because of course they have fleet and fleet not only lets you re-roll your run distance but lets you choose which dice on the assault distance you want to re-roll. So if you roll a 6 and a 1 for assault then you can re-roll the 1 and keep the 6 or you can re-roll both if you want it. So that's pretty good. Um, the other thing is that um, the main way to get them in is Basically, people who know what Repenti do, or at least what they look like on paper, are actually quite scared of them. Um, because, obviously, each one has the potential to devastate extremely expensive units. Um, 
people will try and keep their distance, so it's unlikely that they're going to be charged themselves. Which means, generally, if you're in assault, you're going to be getting that charge, and they can charge quite far. Um, so that's one thing to bear in mind there. Um, the other thing, though, and this is something you really do need to be aware of when using Repentia, is that they're incredibly fragile. They're still only toughness free. They have no armor whatsoever, apart from the Mistress of Repentance, but we'll come back to her. Um, they only have a six up in vulnerable save, as every sister does, but they also have feel no pain, so it's not too bad. But at toughness free, it means you're going to, well, it's easy to be instant death, so feel no pain would have no effect. Um, what this means is you're always going to get a save, at least, against every kind of attack, so that can be nice. Um, what that means is you're still going to get a save against high strength weaponry that can in instant death you. Otherwise, it's more or less a, a four up armor save that you're getting, which isn't terrible to be honest. Um, but with that in mind, you still need to be aware that they are very likely to be dead by the end of the game. Now, that doesn't mean this is a throwaway suicide unit, um, it's quite the opposite actually. Um, Basically, you just need to know that if the Repentia survive, then that's good. If they don't survive, so long as they've done their job, whatever that job was that you had to assign them to, then it doesn't matter because you know you got you got what you needed out of them. <coughs> so, what ca what can they be used for? Well, um, I'm going to just go through a list of things and, you know, not necessarily in the right order. So the first thing is that they are actually quite good for getting line breaker. Now, I know I just said that most of them tend to be dead, but every now and then, well, fairly often at least, if you're careful with them, um, you can get, like, one surviving. And, of course, they're fearless, so they're not, never going to run off the board of morale checks or anything, except for the terrified power, but, you know... Um, and because they have fleet, that means you can actually quite easily get into your enemy's deployment zone um, in the last couple of turns. So, should you be struggling to have units up there, or you, you realise that you're going to need a unit up there quickly and you can't commit any other units, then the Repentia can do that job fairly well. It only takes one of them to be in the enemy deployment zone to get you that victory point. So that's one thing to bear in mind. Um, the other thing you can do with them is... Uh, obviously assault monstrous creatures and armour, but you can use them as a kind of counter-assault element to your army. Um, this works particularly good if you have a static kind of gun line. Uh, to give you an example here, say I've got some retributors. Okay, if I have retributors hiding out in cover, I can put Repentia with them in cover, which makes them a lot more survivable if they were shot at. But it also means that the retributors can shoot at will, you know, set their targets, you know, not really worry about things, not worry about return fire because they're hard to shift as it is. And then um, if anything does get near them, which is nasty in assault, like monstrous creatures, for example, or a big tank bringing a bunch of Terminator as well, you know, you've got these to at least whittle them down a lot. But generally, they just scare them away. Um, which leads your retributes to do their job. Um, so that's, that's really good. Um, one thing to be aware of though is that this is obviously a fairly expensive unit for sisters to um, use as a counter assault. So if you're using primarily for that role, then um, be aware that you may need to make them do something else by the end of the game to actually get their worthwhile points. But you know, if the crux of your battle plan is your gun line, then this is a very good choice to support them. Um, and of course, if they decide to shoot at the Repentia, then that's, you know, they're not shooting at the other parts of your army, like your Exorcists or your Retributors or your Battle Sister squads. Um, but funnily enough, um, in, in just about every game I've used them, they've been able to attack something by the end of the game and generally wipe it out, which is pretty good. Um, and usually that means things have wandered too close to the Retributors or they just haven't seen the Repentia as a threat or they've been too focused on something else and the Repentia have just come out 
behind them and just got into that assault and there you go that's it then they're where they want to be so what what it means is it's it's kind of like a lot about timing um it's it's not so much timing of the charge but timing of when to move them were and basically that means they need to do something every turn. They don't just sit still and wait for the enemy. They need to be shifting because they create a fret bubble around them. And if your opponent knows what he's doing and knows what you can bring, especially repenting it, um, he'll be aware of what they can do. And so he'll be aware of the fret bubble. And this will affect his thinking. So um, because of their huge charge range, they move six, and then they can potentially charge six. I mean, even though the average charge is a 7 with the fleet rerolls, it's a lot higher. Um, so it's quite a large area that they can get into assault with. And if you carefully move these around your other units so they're, they're always in danger of being near the Repentier if they're near them or can attack them, then they're going to see it as too risky and stay away. Okay, And that is a massive bonus that you can have to your army. There's very few things in 40k that can be that effective in that sense. Um, even better, the opponent won't know what Repenter you do. And we'll just see those as a threat go for them. Well, you, obviously the Repenter you're going to get in and destroy something. But as I say, at some point in the game, generally the opponent will be like, okay, I can't hold off these any longer. I have to get these or something else, whatever's there and they'll end up straying into range and there you go, the regret it every time. Um, so let's let's talk about group setup then. Um, squad sizes, uh, I always go for a full Repentia squad. Um, main reason is you get those extra attacks but you also get the fact that because they're so squishy you're gonna lose one here and there, two little pot shots, you're gonna you know, they're just going to struggle to get in full strength or strength enough. I mean, even though they do get four attacks each, there are many times where there's just not enough Repentia left to do enough at the crucial moment. So a full-size squad will help alleviate that quite a lot. Um, I wouldn't take any other upgrades. The Sister Superior, for example, doesn't really need them. Um, she's kind of the... It's strange as usual, superiors act as kind of like space marine sergeants and they're there to benefit leadership and add a little extra punch to a unit. The Mistress of Repentance is different. Um, really she's just kind of there for the background. Um, she does help the unit in subtle ways but as an actual combatant she's not that useful thanks to her weapons. So. The, the way she can help though is that she has grenades, which means the unit can then charge through cover without any initiative loss, although of course there's still initiative one, but you know, it can, it can help. Um, the Mistress of Repentance then can still attack, but also because of the grenades, she can throw them. So she can throw a crack grenade or a frag grenade, which means the Repentia have a shooting attack. Now it doesn't seem like much, but you know, if you picked out, pick out the odd little one here and there. Remember, the Mistress of Repentance is a character, so if you throw a crack grenade and you roll a six, you can allocate the wound. Um, this has actually helped me before. I've managed to allocate a crack grenade wound onto a flamer right before I charge, so I, I survived that overwatch fairly easily. Um, but remember, just don't accept challenges with the with the sister. Um, with the Mistress of Repentance, sorry. Um, she, unless things are in her favour in that it's some kind of creature with poor leadership um, and only a free up armor save and nothing else, then you've got a good chance there. But generally she's just going to get slaughtered before she gets a chance to do anything. And her benefits are better. She can also like kind of tank for the unit, for example, these are here. Say say this is the Mistress of Repentance. I do have a model, but it's upstairs. Um, if you put her at the front of the unit, then obviously she has a free up armor save and feel no pain, and the six up in vulnerable save like everyone else. So she can take the incoming fire if, as you're moving forward and, um, you know, make them slightly more survivable. Don't expect it to last too long, but, you know, it's not too bad. 
Um, the other thing, as I mentioned with Overwatch, um, technically the Act of Faith works during Overwatch because it used their Act of Faith at the start of the Assault phase, which means before you declare charges. Um, so you use the Act of Faith, declare the charge, and then your opponent does Overwatch, which means so long as it passed, any that k killed in Overwatch still get to reach combat and do their single attack at the end of combat. So it's very nice. Um, it just means that even models, you know, only shooting will lose models before they get to do something. So it's nice to have. Um, yeah, the, the last thing really is um, how you can combine these with other units and assisters. Um, obviously, counter assault is a good way. Um, it is possible to let them borrow someone else's dedicated transport rhino. Uh, I have done this a few times before, but honestly, it's not the most effective way to use them in my eyes. Um, mainly because the rhino, despite being fragile, um, they can't charge out of it, which is obviously a problem. Um, it will get them up to the enemy, but if you don't have anything else there, then they're going to be shooting at the rhino and, you know, they'll be stranded because they'll be stuck. If it blows up or gets stunned or whatever, um, then the Repentia basically can't charge, so they're stood out in the open for a turn. Um, this is obviously really bad. Um, the other thing is just that you don't really need the extra mobility in that because of fleet, they can already travel quite fast. I mean, on average, you're going to be travelling about 10 inches a turn of movement, which is, if you consider most deployment types only have a 24-inch gap between them, you know, you, that's a second turn assault if they're on the front line. Um, not that I would put them on the front line, but, you know. Um, so, with all those facts combined, it's, you know, I, I used to run a rhino, like, right around the perimeter with these in, and they'd arrive late game, finally be able to charge, and they do something, but generally by then it was a little too late, and because the other targets had been shot or weakened, the enemy would focus on the full strength for Pentia and deal with them before they were much of a threat. If everything goes together at the same time, um, then obviously they can whittle bits here and there, but then something is going to be full strength and reach them sooner. So that's how I would do it. Um, obviously run them through cover if you get the chance because they they want as much protection as they can get. The more the opponent has to waste on dealing with these to, to bring them down or seize them as a perceived threat, then the more effective they're going to be overall. <clears throat> the last thing is that um, you can actually put a cannonist in the squad. Um, the reason for this is even though the loose fleet, she her act of faith gives everyone plus one to their initiative. So what that means is your eviscerators are going to be initiative two. So if you're up against something which also has power fists or something of that sort, that means you're going to be striking first, which could be very nice. Um, it's very niche though, so, and it depends a lot on what your opponent is going to be bringing, if you know what your opponent is going to be bringing then it, it can be effective, otherwise it seems a little too hard to do. I've also seen people using um, Saint Celestine to tank for them, which is a good good idea. Um, problem is Celestine is obviously a lot faster in the movement phase and these are a lot faster in the running phase and if the two are combined then they both just slow each other down. So it's more of a slow and steady approach than with the Repentia. And honestly, I think there's other units which are better for doing that sort of thing, which I'll cover later on. So um, I would generally run them bare bones, but if the situation demanded and you weren't using any special characters and you were using a cannonist, then this is a good place to put one. So hopefully that's helpful for you. Um, sorry again about the production values in this one. Um, I'm just basically going to get this out there since people ask a lot about the Repentia and, you know, um, I've been using them quite a lot and they've actually been fairly successful for me lately. So I'm considering running them a lot more often. 
Uh, I have a tournament coming up soon with sisters, so we'll see how they are. But yeah, until then, um, don't forget to subscribe, check out my blog, and stay tuned for more sisters and Space Marines videos soon. Thanks for watching.